So I went into a store this week that had one of those caution slippery floor signs. This one instead said caution considerable gravitational pull. You should watch out for that tonight on Neotropolis. This is not business as usual. Welcome to Neotropolis. We are not business as usual. Hi, I'm your host, Jim Evans. Tonight, we'll spend some time with a company here in Northeast Ohio that is working to produce sustainable energy while doing other great things by using one of the fundamental interactions with nature. And how they do it is unique in its simplicity. That's up for you in just a few moments. But first, we take a look at regional business news from the Neotropolis Good Business News Aggregator. This is the Good Business News along the I-77 corridor for the week of February 7th. Tuesday's Cleveland Plain Dealer front page reports that construction will begin this week on the former St. Luke's Medical Center on Shaker Boulevard that has been vacant since 1999. The first phase of the project includes a $22 million renovation to the central wing of the building to build 72 apartments for the elderly and will be funded by a local nonprofit and out-of-state developer. Renovating the entire hospital will be a $53 million three-phase project that could be finished in 2013. Wednesday's Cleveland Plain Dealer business section reports that Pittsburgh-based U.S. Steel Corporation plans to add at least 160 jobs in Lorraine and a city south of Toledo over the next few years as it expands its plants in those areas. Wednesday's Akron Beacon Journal business section reports that Fairlawn-based A. Shulman Incorporated will consolidate its factories in Italy and Australia and anticipates finishing the fiscal year with net income of as much as $62 million. This is the good business news along the I-77 corridor for this week. You have in all likelihood seen a pendulum clock, right? It catches you for a moment, doesn't it? Well, how about a double reciprocating pendulum? It's not a clock, at least not for our purposes tonight. That's just ahead. Stick around. Right now, we spend some important time with our content partner, The Business Journal, with the Weekly Buzz. I'm Stacia Ertis with The Business Journal Weekly Buzz for Youngstown and the Mahoning Valley. Penn National Gaming has made it official. It wants to relocate its Toledo racetrack to the Mahoning Valley if the state approves video lottery terminals. At a meeting in Columbus with the Ohio State Racing Commission, Penn National officials said they would relocate Raceway Park, a harness racing facility in Toledo, to this 186-acre site in Austintown, near I-80 and Route 11. The company says it's prepared to invest about $400 million, including upfront license fees, to construct two racing and VLT facilities, the second one in Dayton at an abandoned Delphi site. They say 1,500 jobs would be created at each location, as well as a 1,000 construction jobs. Another group, the Mahoning Valley Development Group, is also seeking to put a racetrack in the Mahoning Valley. Local auto dealers saw a big jump in new car and truck sales last month. The Automobile Dealers Association of Eastern Ohio reports dealers saw a nearly 62 percent increase from January of last year, with 2009 vehicles sold. Sales of both new and used vehicles were also up significantly, with 4,752 units sold, a nearly 26 percent improvement from a year ago. Top-selling models, the Chevrolet Malibu, followed by the Lordstown-built Chevy Cruze. Featured this week on the Daily Buzz, it's been one year since Revere Data of California moved its operations headquarters to Youngstown. Inside the Semple Building downtown, 17 Revere employees are gathering information on all of the publicly traded companies in the U.S. and some 41,000 international companies. The data provided to all of the world's stock exchanges. Research Director Dan McCafferty says it was the lower cost of doing business and the incentives from the state that made the move so attractive attractive. It's the wealth of talent that's keeping them here. The Youngstown area provides us with an abundance of opportunities. With YSU located right across the street and the rest of the universities within the 100 mile radius of Youngstown, we can find the, the best and the brightest. Revere expects to double their number of employees by the end of the year and to keep growing. The future looks great for us. 
And those are this week's headlines. Be sure to check out the Buzz Newscast every business day online at businessjournaldaily.com. I'm Stacia Ertis. We'll see you next week. Now it's time for a Neotropolis fact. Did you know that Site Selection Magazine ranked the Akron metro area second in the nation for business expansions and locations? There's certainly a need to continue to develop and enhance sustainable sources of energy and power. Well, how about pendulum power? That's a concept that has been championed by a Cuyahoga Falls man who has brought his decades-old idea to fruition. And with it, we now have the Feltenberger Pendulum that operates on the age-old theory of gravity-assisted power. They've done notable things so far with plenty more to come. Jennifer Boris now gives us an up-close look at the Gravitational Energy Corporation that is not doing business as usual. We hear a lot about different types of sustainable energy, like solar and wind, but we're at a company here in Cuyahoga Falls, and they're using this pendulum behind me to make Northeast Ohio the center of gravity, and it is definitely not business as usual. Bruce Feltenberger had a vision decades ago for his current company, Gravitational Energy Corporation. Back in 1965, as a young man, I visited a planetarium in Pittsburgh where they had a giant pendulum on display uh, and it was just sort of a scientific display, uh, but it, it really captured my imagination. And I thought, you know, there might be a way to use something like that uh, to actually produce work. So that's where the idea was born. The company was formed a few years ago to develop and commercialize this technology that he envisioned to harness gravity's effects without using a waterfall. The first tangible example of his vision began with this relatively small prototype. And it's actually the results of this prototype uh, that encouraged us toward uh, moving forward with developing the technology. Gravity-assisted power is a term that we use to describe the effect that our machines produce. But in truth, gravity-assisted power has been around for centuries. Uh, right here in Calga Falls, we've had water falls uh, that at one time, uh, I believe, powered grist mills and then small machine shops and that sort of thing. What our form of gravity-assisted power uh, does is it it enables us to be removed from a source of water and still get the benefit of gravity. A model like this one was actually brought to Haiti after the major earthquake last year to help provide residents with fresh water. It's very easy to start. It's a little like pushing a child on a swing. It takes a little effort to get it going. And you'll notice that the, the more you push it, the easier it gets to operate. The movement of the hand-operated pump determines the speed of the pendulum which creates the momentum needed to pump water. Up to 1,000 gallons of water per hour. This water can be sent through a filtration system, making it clean enough to drink, or it can be used to irrigate fields. The water can even be turned into electricity to recharge batteries. So you can recharge batteries for working LED lighting systems, or tools, or even golf cart sized batteries that can be taken back to their huts and power LED lighting systems in their hut. Our hand operated pendulum pumps are uh, at least predominantly targeted for third world countries. Uh, they don't the require electricity, they don't require fuel. Uh, it's strictly hand operated, which means if the sun's not shining, you can still produce drinking water. Bruce says it feels good knowing his invention is already helping so many people. I spent a lot of years in the making and to actually uh, envision a machine, build it, patent it, uh, do all the things necessary to get to a commercial machine and then see that it's doing people a lot of good, uh, it was almost overwhelming. Yeah, I, I was really thrilled with it. Even the military is approaching the company to discuss using these pumps out in the field. They're extremely interested in using machines like this for uh, the uh, soldiers maybe in the Middle East area. Uh, and. Uh, because it, it can potentially solve a lot of problems providing clean water not only to the soldiers but also when they pull out of an area the idea would be to leave it behind for the people there. He says it would help them cut down on the cost of bringing water to the front lines and also allow them to begin pumping water immediately from any available water source even if that source has been sabotaged. The company also held a public demonstration in Cuyahoga Falls a few months ago to get the word out and show people how easy the pump is to use. The public came out in good numbers and uh, lots of different people got to operate the machine and uh, many people were remarking uh, that, that the volume of water we were producing, they were saying, this doesn't seem like I'm working that hard. 
Uh, and so, of course, that's what we wanted to hear. Getting to this point with this company, however, hasn't been quite so easy. And he's had some struggles along the way. Mostly in the form of financing. Uh, as an entrepreneur, uh, there's all kinds of things you want to do. And uh, uh, my partners and I uh, pretty well exhausted our own resources. And, you know, so it slows you down at times. Uh, but uh, th that's probably the biggest challenge. Despite some hurdles, Bruce believes in his company and the potential it has to help people around the globe while creating income right here in our region. I think, first of all, we're introducing a brand new concept to the world. Uh, we're saying, here's an opportunity to let gravity help us do work. And to that degree, if you can seriously reduce the amount of fuel required to produce electricity, then I think it's not business as usual. There's going to be a demand for these machines, and we're going to start filling up machine shops uh, all around the Northeast Ohio area. On a much larger scale, the company has created another prototype machine that produces electricity. We developed the water pump as a way to uh, help us through and uh, earn some money, but the primary focus of the technology is for generating electricity. It's an 18-foot-long pendulum weighing in at 18,000 pounds. And it's operated with a compressed air system. The pendulum with our device is going to be pumping the hydraulic fluid, which will in turn generate electricity through a hydraulic motor and a generating system. You can hear that puff of air in the background right now. That's two-tenths of a second of 80 PSI air swinging that pendulum back and forth every five seconds. Bruce says he is currently negotiating with a fairly large Ohio company to form a joint venture to work with them on adding equipment to this giant pendulum, which will allow them to produce a significant amount of energy and accurately measure fuel use. And it helps us to keep up with energy demands uh, without increasing emissions. That's how I see it. I think it could be a big win for everybody. And it all started with an idea back in 1965 on a field trip that many others also took. The difference is that Bruce saw something that no one else did, and he never forgot it. Right now, this is the only place where the machine you see behind me exists. But in the future, they're planning to build much larger models that can provide enough electricity for 1,500 households. In Cuyahoga Falls, I'm Jennifer Boris for Western Reserve PBS. Are you not doing business as usual? Then email us at neotropolis.org. Tell us how you're changing your business, organization, or government agency to compete in the new economy. And who knows, you could be starring on Neotropolis, not business as usual. So we took a look at sustainable energy from a microeconomic point of view. Now we talk with experts in the field for a macroeconomic perspective, or what we like to call fly-eye economics. With over 4,000 lenses, the eyes of a common housefly are among the most complex in the insect world. With us tonight, our panelist, Will Hemker, entrepreneur executive with the University of Akron Research Foundation, and Dr. A.J. Mahajan, associate dean for research in the College of Engineering with the University of Akron. Gentlemen, thanks so much for being with us tonight. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a time when, before electricity, people used waterfalls to generate power and run equipment. Why have we maybe gotten, we still have that, but why have we gotten seemingly so far away from that, that technology? Well, well, it starts out as, I think you'd have to say it's cheap oil. Yeah. Uh, we went into the internal combustion engine, and whether that be uh, gasoline or diesel driven, and uh, they do a lot of work for us. Not only just move us around uh, from place to place in our automobiles, but uh, they're used quite heavily uh, to generate uh, electricity, even uh, as backup power and, and, uh, and uh, remote power sources. So, you know, that's probably the simplest uh, uh, reason now that we have the challenge to come up with uh, alternatives because of the price of on petroleum being uh, so high or going up so high is is is, is really gives us best to some of the basics that, that our forefathers used and uh, I think we see that in this a in this in this application yeah it's almost a new time uh, it's almost like the wild west for alternate energy and so you see a lot of clever and innovative devices coming into the market that pretty much do what we were doing 2,000 years ago uh, but hopefully doing it in a clever way, in a more innovative way, and uh, giving a real, uh, real alternative to, to oil. Well, we always hear about the w wind and solar for re renewable energy sources, and the folks at GEC have come up with this 
unique concept as they have. Talk about its uniqueness and, and the impact it could have on, on business and jobs in Northeast Ohio. Well, I'm relatively new at it, and I'm not really a, an engineer. I'll let Asia get into <laughs> sure. that. But, but basically, I, uh, I'm, I'm an industrial scientist in, in the areas of more materials such as polymers and the like. But I was introduced to them about a, a little over a month ago. And I was impressed. And number one, their, their know-how and their ability to reduce it to practice. And, and as you've shown in your, your videos, uh, some of their prototypes are amazing. What they really have there is, is unique transmission. Taking a low energy source in one machine is actually uh, uses human power, which is you know a fraction of a horsepower that humans can generate on, in the work aspect, and, and transmit that energy uh, using a pendulum as, as, as an, an efficient medium to, to assist that en energy development of that low energy source and transfer it very efficiently into another straight work source, whether it be pumping of fluids or that, whether they could be directly uh, connected into a generator that can generate more usable, uh, transferable energy, such as electricity. So, uh, so, you know, that's what's unique about them. They've taken some of the old world ideas mm -hmm. uh, and, and then have put in some very good machining and very uh, low friction um, uh, bearings and, and movement parts into that transmission. So it's really a, a transmission medium. Yeah, I think the design's quite clever. This is one of those designs that you can actually call clever because it, okay. converts, the, it converts the pendulum motion into a reciprocating motion. Mm -hmm. So as the pendulum goes from left to right, you can actually see a, a motion, a back and forth motion. And because of the momentum of the pendulum, they can get a pretty good reciprocating motion that can then be used to, to either generate power or pump water or filter, filter water. So from an engineering point of view, certainly it's, it's, uh, it's uh, unique, it's innovative. Uh, the trick now is to convert it into a business. I think that's where the challenge lies. Exactly, and that's you know how I was introduced to them. These guys are, are very uh, clever and very sharp, hands-on engineers. The a aspect is, is is they know they need a little help. I mean, to get that this idea out of the out of their prototyping uh, workshop into a, a viable business, and and that's one thing we're we're trying to put together right now a business plan that basically the people out there, potential customers, are also investors. Can un and can read and understand, and that's the language that they, they need to understand it. And that's basically what we do as entrepreneurs through, through the Research Foundation. And uh, so uh, myself and a partner, uh, Sherry Waxman, who's one of our my colleagues, she's very good at that in, in industrial um, applications and the mechanics, and, uh, and she's right in on it, and we're going to see if we can help them out. Yeah. And they've got a few things going for them. In Northeast Ohio, this really is a good time to be doing these kinds of things. You know, Northeast Ohio, Western Pennsylvania have been recognized by the U.S. Department of Commerce as a regional innovation cluster, okay. as an RIC, in two areas, biosciences and clean energy technologies. So that immediately gives us the, the leverage that you need to say, okay, look, this is a cluster. The, these people are not alone. These companies are not alone. There's a plethora of companies out here that are doing similar kinds of things, and that gives the momentum. So that's a good thing. Uh, through Will and his colleagues, they can be... Uh, they can be plugged into the Archangels network and, and other such, such investor uh, networks. Again, right place, right time. Uh, they just need a little bit of help mm -hmm. to, to really get them on that path. Once they gain some momentum, what's their message to perhaps businesses out there? Hey, this is what we're doing. This can really benefit you. Uh, well, the message is, is it's doable, all right? You, you, first of all, you have to be a passionate. You have an, a creative idea and a, and a design. They've done that so far. Now they know that they need to get other experts involved in their, in their venture. People that can literally come on board, help be part of their management team, that, that can take them forward and make them very investable. Also that network that, that we provide here in the region, not only obviously the universities that we're connected with, uh, but also uh, other businesses, large and small. Also the investors. Uh, you know, the businesses right now, um, or any time. They, they really don't want to invest very early stage. It's too risky. But there are people that are out there that do that, whether they be annual investors or venture capitalists. But even though we, we also have regional sources, uh, regional government and, and funds that provide grants and, and other uh, uh, business uh, resources. You have angel investor networks. Uh, we have state funding, such as the Third Frontier, which is very effective in our state. And obviously, national. If we identify potential uh, government, federal government agencies that would like that. For example, the military is looking very much to reduce their, their carbon footprint, the amount of petroleum they have to use to support their soldiers or their forces out in, out in the field. This would be a great medium for them to get in. That would be a potential customer for gravity-assisted power. How might this impact jobs? 
the, I think I think tremendously. I mean, this is a fundamental machine that um, if the, it could be, the whole machine could be built in the area, showing real value or important components even using those strengths of Northeast Ohio, which is you know the machining, the the, the materials. These, these guys have a lot of know-how. They've been there before. I think they just need a little assistance. Yeah, one of the challenges is going to be identifying their early penetration markets, right? Okay. So this, this may not be a machine that you and I will go out and mm -hmm. buy today. Right. But this certainly could be a machine or a device that could be used in a third world country or could be used in, uh, in areas that have, don't have access to, to electricity. And so getting those early successes for this company would be absolutely critical because once they can penetrate the market, it doesn't matter where you penetrate it. Once you identify it, penetrate it, then they can start creating these, uh, these devices and start creating jobs, as you mentioned. And a global impact, of course. Uh, you mentioned third world countries. They're already, um, they've already implemented uh, their device in Haiti to produce water. They have the military uh, um, connection as well now that, th that they're pursuing, and it could really be a, a global thing. I think it can be. It reminds me of a, of a non-profit, I forget their name, but uh, they, they use the children's merry-go-rounds to, uh, to generate power. And they've installed uh, hundreds, if not thousands. In fact, they were sponsored by a lot of companies that, that really saw the merit in that idea. Uh, and uh, they've installed hundreds of them in, in Africa. And uh, just the energy harnessed by the kids using the merry-go-round is enough to power a building. Not a huge building, but enough, sure. enough to, to not want electricity from the outside. So I think this certainly could be a, a device or a machine that could fit in that category where you, know, you, you have somebody swinging it back and forth and you, you're pumping water and you're cleaning it and it's, it's there for a few people to, to drink. And, and you realize that in, your, in these, these many parts of the world, the amount of electricity uh, needed is, is very low, but it's needed because their, their cell phone systems are, 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 are there, they're in place. You know, things such as uh, lighting at night, just for the, sure. they can go beyond the regular sunlight for, for business or, or schools. So, you know, they need electricity. How can we get it to them? There you are. Great stuff. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, appreciate your time tonight. You're welcome. Thank you. Again, interesting things ahead for GEC. And with that, it's time now for Into the Future. Into the Future. Hi, my name is John Steadley, and I'm the president and founder of Intelligent Mobile Support. We have developed a mobile cloud computing platform that allows our clients to provide just-in-time delivery of critical information to mobile business professionals in sales and customer service. Our technology educates, informs, and connects people to improve individual and team performance. Business professionals waste an enormous amount of time seeking out information. The problem is particularly acute and well-documented among sales teams. Sales teams introduce new products, enter new markets, and battle competitors who change the game while it is still being played. The pain point is significant as over 50% of buyers report that sales reps are unable to effectively answer their questions. And buyers report that 30% of deals were lost because the salesperson was not better informed. So how are we unique in addressing this pain point? Intelligent mobile support is unique in that we provide mobile access to critical sales and customer support information in two ways. First, if the information is explicitly documented, such as text, graphics, a video clip, or even a PowerPoint slide deck, we can immediately deliver that information directly to the user's mobile phone. Second, if the information is not explicitly documented, or if the user just needs to ask a question, we can immediately connect the mobile user by text messaging or direct dial call to the right individual in the client's organization who can answer their question. To find out how we can improve the performance of your sales or customer service team, See our website at intelligentmobilesupport.com. Thanks. We go from a magnetic field to the financial field, and we take a scan of that with the experts at NCA Financial Planners. Now with the stock wrap. This week's local company is Eaton Corporation, headquartered in Cleveland, Ohio. Eaton is a global technology leader in diversified power management solutions that make electrical, hydraulic, and mechanical power operate more efficiently effectively, safely, and sustainably. 
Eaton Corporation is a diversified power management company with 2010 sales of $13.7 billion and is celebrating its 100th anniversary this year. Eaton began as a vehicle component supplier, but it has diversified to include a broader industrial and commercial focus. Today, Eaton's businesses comprise five distinct segments, electrical, hydraulics, aerospace, truck, and automotive. It is a global leader in the electrical components and systems for power quality, distribution, and control. Eaton is also a leading manufacturer of hydraulic components, systems, and services for the industrial and mobile equipment area. And in the aerospace industry, Eaton is a worldwide leader in design, manufacture, and marketing of a comprehensive line of reliable, high-efficiency systems and components for hydraulic motion control, aerospace fuel applications, and commercial and military use. The vehicle group is also a global leader in the truck and automotive drivetrain, powertrain systems for performance, fuel economy, and safety. Eaton has approximately 70,000 employees and sells products to customers in more than 150 countries. The corporation is publicly traded on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol ETN, and this week Eaton raised its dividend by 17% from $0.58 cents a share to $0.68 cents a share, and the stock announced a two-for-one stock split payable February 28th. The midweek close was $110.78, and year-to-date the stock is a positive 9.13%, and over five years, Eaton is up 66.91%. Back to you, Jim. Well, there's certainly a strong pool to culture and entertainment in Northeast Ohio, and we have the guy who is centered and has the energy on that. Cool Cleveland's Thomas Mulready joins us now to tell you about some other events that are going on in Neotropolis this weekend. What we're talking about is the business of fun. Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com, and this week we're talking about live music in Northeast Ohio for Valentine's Day and for the rest of February. We are here in Akron in the north side area, right behind me here, Vegetarian Restaurant, of course, founded by Chrissy Hind, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductee and member of the Pretenders Rock Band. She created this restaurant, a vegetarian restaurant, and she lives right upstairs here in the loft. And across the parking lot here is one of the best live venues for music in the region, voted one of the best in Akron and Canton. It's called the North Side. And in February, they've got some cool stuff coming up. They've got bands like the Woodies, Mike Lenz, and Get On Up. And then, of course, just up the street a bit in downtown Akron, a venue that I would highly recommend called Music Up. And they've got some great stuff happening. They're right on Market Street. Uh, they're doing a thing for Valentine's Day called La Femme Mystique Burlesque. And uh, don't miss that in February. Also, Youngstown, some great live music happening there at Tommy Dogs in Niles. They've got the Rolling Rockers. Third Class and Fillmore Jive are going to be at Cedars in Youngstown. And the Michael Austin Project is going to be at Crest Lanes in Warren. And don't forget Cleveland, of course, the Beachland Ballroom, always highly recommended. Uh, they got the Holy Ghost Tent Revival coming up in February. Cabinet, Hoot, Hellmouth, and a band that we love, Long Road, David Budin, who is an old folky from the 60s, and he's writing for Cool Cleveland. He's a fabulous musician. He's got a group that's sort of a folk revival group called Long Road. And don't forget the Beachland Brunch that happens at the Beachland on the weekends. And also the Grog Shop uh, in the Cleveland area. They've got bands like Rooney and the Chapin Sisters uh, and the Rainy Day Saints, a great band from Cleveland. And on Mondays, they've got their karaoke. So this February for Valentine's Day and beyond, check out live music. This is Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com. Have a great week in Neotropolis. Always remember, there are things that you could do to help the Northeast Ohio economy. Simply get some momentum and get out to any of the events Thomas told us about and make your investment in fun. You can also position yourself out there and make your brilliant comments about the Northeast Ohio economy to some people who can feed off your energy and tell them to spread the word. In the meantime, log on to our website, neotropolis.org, and tell us what you think. I'm Jim Evans. We'll see you next week on Neotropolis, not business as usual.
Funding for Neotropolis has been provided by the Burton D. Morgan Foundation, committed to the free enterprise system. The Dominion Foundation. Jumpstart, working with entrepreneurs to accelerate the growth of their high potential businesses to create a more prosperous economic future for Northeast Ohio. The Raymond John Wien Foundation. Youngstown Business Incubator.